there are two kinds of problems in the study of consciousness. Those that seem to be solvable in the next 50 years and those that we may never solve. One of them is recognizing patterns. That's one of the easy problems. One that seem to have a solution. Discrimination. Any kind of conscious organism is going to be able to have to discriminate between different patterns. There's a lot of cognitive information on how that's done. So we seem to be on the way, on the trail to solving that kind of problem. Another kind of problem that any conscious organism must have is reaction. It must be able to react to the external environment. We have a lot of information about how that works on the cognitive and the nerve level. So again, we are on the way to solving that problem. The integration of information, that's something that we can of course model in machines, but we've got a lot of information about how that happens in the brain, how that happens in the nervous system. So again, it's one of these so-called easy problems. Easy may be very hard, but it is solvable. Reportability. Any kind of organism has to be able to report its both its relationship between its internal things like emotion and be able to know its conditions. So that has to be available to the conscious system. Focus. A system has to be able to integrate and have one direction of focus. It may be getting huge numbers of inputs, but it has to be able to focus and control its outputs in one direction or another. Controlling behavior. A conscious organism has to be able to control its behavior, at least to some extent. It has to be able to decide both what physical actions to take and what emotional or mental or psychological roles to take. There has to be some kind of monitoring system of knowing what's happening inside the organism, what's happening inside the body. Again, this is one of these problems that we have a lot of information about and which seems to be solvable in terms of understanding what consciousness really is. A conscious organism has to know when it's awake. This is, of course, one of the mysteries that we have this state of waking and of sleep. But obviously a conscious organism has to be aware of being awake it cannot be believing that it's in a dream when it's not. We have this strange existence we have, which we spend one-third of our lives in, of dreaming, of sleep. But of course, an organism has to be able to monitor that, and you have to know when you are in that state or when you're not in that state. Pain. An organism has to know when it's pain. One of my fellow speakers, I think, is going to be able to speak very effectively about pain. If you don't have pain, then you can get into very dangerous situations. So, that's one of those things that has to be reported that a conscious system has to know. What's really difficult is this quality of experience. This is something which doesn't seem to be available for easy solutions. Will we ever understand what it means to have experiences? I don't know. Will we solve it? What is the experience of listening to music? What is the experience of hearing a Beethoven symphony, whether you like it or not? What is that quality? What's the quality of hearing the opposite, say, a hip-hop song? They have their qualities, they have their experiences, which are unique. The quality of red, the quality of the smell, the quality of the reproduction of red, that has a very specific and strong symbolic experiential quality to it. What makes it? Why do we have to have an experience of red? Chocolate, the taste of it, the smell of it, the quality of it in your mouth, the way it hits so many senses, has a very powerful experiential aspect to it. How do we explain that? How do we put that into physical terms? How can we reproduce that? Emotions, they're not just physiological states, they have a quality, the quality of being happy or sad. So much of our lives are characterized by this. They color our reactions to things. And they're very powerful aspects of how we experience the world. Ecstasy or spiritual aspects. How do we sense the greatness, the beyond, something that is beyond our sort of normal experience. Those are also experiences which we can't seem to somehow put into our 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 understanding of what consciousness is. Consciousness has continuity. It keeps on going. It has the sense that one thing flows into the next. That's a quality of consciousness when you are awake, experiential. The stream of consciousness, the extreme of experience, which goes on, which seems to have a connection, that even when you wake up, 
that you sense that you are a part of the river of your life that you have been in before, that it will continue. And finally, this sense of self, of who you are, this great mystery that you may go through many experiences, change, and yet you are something essential. There is something that it means to be you. These are the hard problems of consciousness. Thank you.